I'm Joshua Loving for BCA, and today we are here on a bright and early Saturday morning at Plouffe School to learn about leadership. Did she make the shirts or did you? <laughs> we made them together. Chocolate, gotta love it. Hello and welcome to One North Main. and I'm the Executive Director of the Family Center and Community Connections of Brockton, and we are programs of the United Way of Greater Plymouth County. You're here um, with us at our ninth annual South Shore Leadership Conference, which is all about building resiliency, promoting positive youth, family, and community development. Alongside me is our coordinator for the event, Christy Glenn. Hello, yes, my name is Christy Glenn, and I'm a consultant for Community Connections of Brockton and the Family Center. I oversee this conference and also the South Shore Community Magazine, really focused on how people lead from the seat that they're in and leading with purpose. Workshops are right here. Come on, Come on, on the, the workshops. workshops. Right, God wants us to do it. So the topic for today, do it the right way. The topic for today, that got placed in my heart, and I'll let Naomi give her, uh, you know, I'm bragging on hers, was sex. So I'm going to talk about sex today and how it affects us when we're single and how it affects us in our relationship, especially in a Christian relationship. And babe? And my topic today, will be, I will be speaking on activate your purpose because we all have a purpose in our lives. And not only that, that's why we're here today, lead your purpose. That's one of the main purpose of this whole entire conference. And not only that, in relationships, or either you're single or, or married or whatever um, state you're in, you need to know your purpose. We all have a purpose in this world, and why not we follow it by talking to each other and really trying to figure out what our true purpose is from within. Cool. So uh, we're just going to sit down at this point because we, well, we don't understand the whole time. Or whatever. I'm just sitting down. I, and, you know, as a matter of fact, let's try and make everything. You want, you want to sit right there in the middle? Sorry. I put you on black. You good? It's just easier. Oh, I need a little chair. <laughs> Babe, I'll let you start your uh, mind. So for me, I the first the reason why I picked um this topic is because it's not that I picked it, but I just felt like from God, like definitely it's a year of purpose. I feel like we need to really walk in our purpose, especially as women, men who are going through a lot in our lives. I feel like you know with through, within adversity, without within issues that we're going through in our lives, we really need to push through and really walk within our purpose because. 
nowadays we feel like with society and social media, with everything going on in the world, it's like, what are we really living our lives for? Are we really living our lives for popularity? Are we living our lives within our purpose? Or are we just living life just to live life day by day and like I'm living life, you know? Life is good, but deep down it's like, what am I here for? We always want to question ourselves like, God, you brought me on this earth, and you know, I have, I have a mother, I have a father, I have siblings, I'm married, I have all these things going on, I'm single, I'm in school, like, but what is really my true purpose? And I just personally feel like our true purpose is from within ourselves. It's like we wake up every single day, it's a blessing. Every single day we see another day, it's like by God's grace, and how can we really push through that? And one thing I could definitely tell you all today is to push through that by actually Speaking self-awareness, like you, mentioned, like you mentioned in the video, self-awareness is something that will really help you to really figure out your purpose. And not only that, it's that self-awareness, your self-love for yourself, whatever you love and whatever you're passionate about. If you want to become a doctor, if you want to, you know, you're working that nine-to-five job, but you feel like that company or that entrepreneurship venture that you really want to go towards is what you really want to do really talk to someone about it, find a mentor, a leader, someone that will be able to direct you in the right path, and talk to God, talk to whatever, you know, whatever spiritual connection you have with whoever you feel comfortable to speak to on that to really guide you to your purpose. It's an amazing event, the Leadership Conference, and this is the ninth annual Leadership Conference. These stories built us, help us become leaders. But in order for us to become leaders, we also have to know ourselves. Self-awareness is very critical. It's knowing yourself, knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. My name is Jensen Denois, and I, I volunteer with the Family Center and the South Shore Community Magazine. And I also have a television program called Hero in You. It's an educational program that we hear in Plymouth County where we interview people in the community on a particular topic and theme who are doing good work and good deeds, and then we connect the topic to a comic book issue. So this self-awareness episode, we work on it, and one thing, this episode right here is, it was very appealing because actually, we actually had the chance to interview the late Fabio Lahipole, and she talked about the importance of self-awareness. And unfortunately, she's not here, but she has been a critical leader in our leadership conference and also in our community. So I had the chance to collaborate with Melinda Christie, South Shore Community Magazine, Amanda Trask with the YMCA, Jennifer Edwards from Be Fitness, and many other people in the community to talk about the importance of self-awareness. And the comic book example that we use, well, for some people who don't know this, Fabiola, she was a big fan of Black Panther. And so, uh, with our episodes, we usually connect the comic book story to the topic. And so, she felt connected with the Black Panther story. So, to wrap everything up, I am truly honored to present to you the hero in you self-awareness. Understand to lead with a purpose, you need to have self-awareness. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Jensen Denoyce here for a new and exciting episode of Hero and You and we are filming at DW Field Park. And I'm Simone Antunes. Hero and You is an educational program that focuses on self-growth and self-empowerment. The purpose of our show is to discuss a topic connected to an issue on a comic book and see how it can relate to our lives. So you can find the hero in you. That's right. Today's topic is on self-awareness. Author and Minister Bill Hybels has a quote that says, self-awareness allows you to self-correct. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of self-awareness. Developing your self-awareness helps you learn more about yourself and your capabilities. Self-awareness allows you to discover your strengths and your challenges in order to lead with a purpose. The comic book example that we're using is coming from The Rise of the Black Panther, issue number two, written by Evan Narciss and he will talk about the importance of Black Panther leading in Great Nation of Wakanda. We interviewed a group of Broxton High students who um, are part of Kids Connect Mentorship Program at the Old Colony YMCA in Broxton. They shared how Kids Connect has helped them to shape their self-awareness within their minds. So the clip. I got started with Kids Connect through my brother and so he started doing this program through the summer program he started and then they invited them to come to Kids Connect and then 
one day I just came with him and then I just kept going ever since. I believe beginning of eighth grade or some of eighth grade, not really sure. And I was sitting at the table with some friends and there used to be this flyers, they used to be there just gathering dust all year and no one really got a chance to look at it. And I was, one day I just got courageous enough to get up and actually take a look at it. I don't really understand the reason why no one just looked at it, but you know, oh well. But I just got a chance to go up and look at the simple piece of paper, which in other terms, changed my life. I mean, it was actually during my freshman year, right? So um, I had a few friends that, that, um, that did Kids Connect. And one day I was at the YMCA and I seen them. And I was like, oh, what are y'all doing here? And they were like, oh, we have a meeting. And at that point, I didn't know anything about Kids Connect. And they were like, Kids Connect. I was like, oh, what is that? And they were like, just show up to the meeting and you'll see. And uh, since then, I I've been here coming every Tuesday and doing stuff with Kids Connect. So it all started when I was in middle school in the eighth grade. And I was introduced to the Summer Leaders Program. And through that, um, I was introduced to STEM in high school and also as an after school program. Um, here at the Y, did Kids Connect. Kids Connect, how did you teach me self-awareness? Um, I think it's because we do so much stuff, from volunteering to going to colleges, stuff like this. I was open to a, a bigger world, if that makes sense, and I learned more about me with this program. For example, um, I learned that I like piloting planes because I did this program called Dream Flyers that, that you know Kids Connect, Amanda, she connected me to it. Also going to colleges, I, I signed up with UMass Lowell because of Kids Connect. I, lo I looked at these other colleges like, mm, maybe this is not what I want. And then I got to UMass Lowell, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, and I've been able to work with kids too, and the kids kind of opened up my mind, if that makes sense. So like, I kind of learned on myself. So I like to work with kids because Kids Connect has like these programs that works with other little kids. So at Brockton High, we have, uh, like we have some mentoring and um, tutoring programs at our school. So I guess a way uh, I could apply self-awareness would be helping with uh, having the opportunity to uh, either tutor or help people in need in our school um, who need extra help um, after school. So for example, uh, picking up classes. Because of Kids Connect, I learned that I don't like so much stuff and what I like. So I try, I try to find classes that you know kind of suit what I like based on my experience with Kids Connect or that I got outside. Um, other ways also as a student, so I became a better uh, speaker, so like I'm, I'm better at presenting in school and stuff like that. Um, what else is there? So like, I'm not afraid to speak my mind anymore because Kids Connect opened up to me about that. So being at Brooklyn High is obviously very challenging due to its big size. And one important thing that has teach us is kind of like, you no, know, literally, put in, making us look into a tunnel vision, but kind of like putting the idea into our head where we have to focus to what we want. And the fact that they teach us how to be aware all the time, not literally aware of what's going on, but aware of your importance or the effect you have around people around you, you know? So for example, I can be like one day just talking to a teacher and then the next day, you know, you can, it's like the simplest thing you can like having making her smile because working at a place that crowd is really hard, and knowing that you can have an effect on a person like that is amazing. Just being able to put a smile in a person's face every day just does the most. I got uh, involved through a friend of mine a couple years ago, Kristen Glenn. Christy actually consults for the magazine, and she invited me to just come and sit in on one of the meetings that the magazine was having and I said sure and I've been hooked ever since. It was uh, Fabiola Hippolyte and may her soul rest in peace. She was the one at a networking event. She came up to me and she said, hey, you know, I love your work. I've read your work, uh, it's amazing. I would love for you to be a part of this. And you know, I came over to the meeting for the South Shore Community Magazine meeting it was a great group of people, great group, it looked like a family to me, and the rest was history. My mother, Lise, introduced me to the magazine. She attends the meetings monthly, and I decided I would tag along with her. I got started with the magazine was um, when I was at my, my former college, um, Massasoit Community College in Brockton, Massachusetts. I reached out to a professor named Jensen Denoyes, and um, I, had, I had, had a good conversation with him, and I told him I wanted to be a sports writer and expand my career and um, broaden my field and create opportunities for myself. When I'm writing, I try to write through the lens of a parent 
and um, I try to think of things that other parents may be thinking of, um, something that they may want to read. So for instance, one of the articles I wrote about was um, walking with a high schooler through colleges and looking at colleges with a high schooler because my daughter um, is a sophomore over at Brockton High School and we've been visiting colleges. I say start sooner rather than later. And so I've just been, that was an article I wrote about. I also wrote about um, being self-aware and being proud of who you are. Having a teenage girl, I'm constantly emphasizing for her to be proud of who she is. Um, and um, so I think that's been helpful to me. And I've also written about just volunteerism and, and what that's done for me. Okay, yeah, self-awareness has helped me write these articles in many ways. Uh, you know, I'll be more specific today because uh, you know, I think it's important that I share really f from a genuine place how I've been able to uh, you know, write these articles. So first of all, I'm a believer, I love God, uh, I'm a Christian man, so a lot of my articles are geared towards the spirit, right? Um, and for me, you know, it took my sister passing away um, who inspired me. So for a long time, I was running away from the idea of God and, you know, anything with prayer, any of that stuff. Um, you know, I grew up in the church. My mom was a prayer warrior and, and she still is. Um, and, you know, what got me to really pursue that relationship and embrace it more was the message my sister left me with before she passed away. And she said, you need to embrace and stop running away from this. This is who you are. This is your identity, right? And for me, I said, okay, great. If this is who I am, Maybe I should give it a shot. Maybe I should pray and talk to God and see what happens. And you know, ever since it's been it's been great because now uh, um, you know a lot of my articles uh, are, are towards the spirit man, how we can see and feed the spirit man as opposed to you know our physical body all the time. Self awareness has helped me become an effective writer for the magazine by helping me know myself and be mindful of my experiences and helping me relate to other teenagers through my writings. Self-awareness um, helped me to write for the write articles for this magazine by I'm just glad that they give me the opportunity to write whatever I want on any topic I want. It allows me to um, elaborate my knowledge, express my knowledge, and be free and ease my mind. My goal is to involve more parents and have parents see that it's really simple to write an article. I'm not writing essays, three and four page essays. You know, an article can be, you know, four, five, six sentences. I write about what interests me, uh, what I think might be interesting to other parents. So my goal is to get other parents involved. And you, you may not be able to attend a meeting, but maybe you can volunteer by writing an article, even a recipe, I think would be also helpful. So hopefully I'm getting more parents involved in, in reading the articles. and. I hope that they enjoy the articles as well. A lot of my articles, when I write them, they're, first off, comes from an instruction from the Holy Spirit. And so when I get instructed by the Holy Spirit to write these messages, I know it's a teaching and it's something deeper than me and it's something bigger than me. So for me, whenever I, I, uh, someone picks up this article and looks at it and reads it, the goal is to get them to pay attention to their spirit, man, because a lot of the physical stuff, when you die, you're not going to... <laughs> you're not going, you know, in the spirit realm with your car or your house, right? You're going by yourself. So a lot of these articles is to inspire them to start paying attention to your spirit, man, to start talking to God, to start realizing that when we call for help and ask for help, the help is given. I love to relate to other teenagers in my writings, and that's definitely my primary goal. I also would love to give parents the perspective of their child. My goal when people read my article is to make sure I entertain the reader in a way or help them learn something and also and just put a smile on their faces and let them know that Chris Bazil was a good reader and a good writer. After our interview with South Shore Community Magazine writers, we've learned that writing requires a lot of self-awareness. Have you ever thought about what a writer and a fitness instructor have in common? They both work hard at their crafts. We recently interviewed Jennifer Edwards, the owner of Body Elements Fitness. She talked about the importance of self-awareness for your body. Check it out. I decided to become an instructor when my favorite aerobics instructor left. 
the class that I was teaching. I had just started working out and I found my favorite class. I found the, you know, the people that I wanted to be with and, they, and then he left. And so I saw an opportunity to kind of step up and figure out how I was gonna get that good workout that I needed and how I was gonna be able to help my friends that were also taking the class. So the staff at the time at the Y wasn't that diverse and I figured I would step up and take a class to get certified and then I started teaching soon after my certification. My self-awareness came from, you know, just being able to um, try to figure out how I was going to lead uh, the class because I was new and I wasn't sure if I, confident in myself that I could deliver the same class that the previous instructor had. But, you know, I decided that I would just ask for feedback from people that would be helpful to me um, and share that information with them. And that was, for me, very helpful in becoming more confident um, and being more aware of how I could motivate people. How does self-awareness impact your life body style? So that's a really good question, Ada. Um, the first thing I would say is that coming to the gym in general, the, mm -hmm. fir the first step that you take to come to class is um, allowing you to, to be aware that you need something to help your fitness lifestyle, that you're interested in working out. Um, so it, it really also impacts you in a way that when you come to class, you'll notice that everybody has a different um, fitness level. Mm -hmm. So if you are aware that, you know, I can only do 10 jumping jacks, but I'm still going to continue to do the workout, you're aware that of your limits, but you're still taking the step and making a transformation in your life. People work out for a lot of different reasons. Um, my first want would be for them to get whatever they came out of what they came here for, that they got it. So for a lot of people, they come here for social aspect. A lot of people come here because they feel like they want to be a part of the family. There's a lot of ownership um, that starts to happen when you become a regular in a class. Um, and I also want people to feel empowered and in control of their fitness and what they are interested in doing with their bodies. Be your own superhero in that regard. I mean, honestly, Everybody, I, what I would stay away from is any type of online certifications. Go to a class, take a class, and learn how your body moves um, so that you are able to teach an effective and deliver effective classes. In the unknown world, when a loved one dies, no one knows what happens. The end. It's the same thing when people see Wakanda, they see poverty, but little do they know there is an unknown world. This past year, South Shore Community Magazine lost a key person and an active member, someone who not only cared for the magazine, but also cared for her community, and she also cared for her children. Hero and you had the opportunity to interview Fabiola Hippolyte before she passed away, and she explained the importance of self-awareness. With self-awareness, Fabiola stated that it allows you to have leadership with purpose. Let's play the interview with Fabiola Hippolyte before she passed away. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me again. My name is Fabiola Hippolyte. I am a single mother of three, currently battling stage four liver cancer and, on, and bone cancer. This, is, this topic is very dear to me. Uh, Self-awareness it wasn't until I decided to take some time out to really dig, dig deep within uh, and really becoming, I mean, becoming aware of what was causing me to be so sick. Part of my healing, I had to, like you said, self-awareness leads to self-correction. And self-correcting is ultimately will lead you to healing, right? So there was a lot of um, emotions that I was carrying around, resentment, anger, hate, worry, you name it. I was that, I felt like my body was like that perfect host to carry that kind of, you know, to carry the cancer uh, because of all these emotions. I always say, you know, when we as women put ourselves last, you know, we invite all kinds of um, disease to take over our body because we're not taking care of ourselves. Uh, we're not aware of what we're doing to ourselves, you know. We are everywhere and nowhere. We are everything to everybody, but we are nothing to ourselves. Uh, until you become self-aware, you take the time to really um, a analyze, you know. Um, it's called self, um, self um, analyzation, like where you really take the time to sit with yourself and become aware of what's 
causing you to be sick, what's causing you to be angry, to be sad, whatever it is, you know, you need to take, as, we as women need to take more time for ourselves to be with ourselves because we want to be the best wife, you know, in order to be a good wife, a good girlfriend, a good mother, a good friend, sister, whatever you're trying to be good at, until you can be good to yourself, you will not be good to anything. And when you're not good to yourself, that's when you invite, you become a host for a disease. I became more self-aware, you know what it is, this is, this is the example. Your friends or your mirrors, right? Um, I became aware because I had great friends that were mirrors of what I was I needed to deal with and there were friends that were willing to help me become aware of some of the things that was causing me to be sick. So that's one of the things that I had to do. I had to stop running and listen to the people in my life that was trying to make me become aware of the different things, emotions that was causing me to be sick. So these friends become your friends or your mirrors, okay? So make sure you surround yourself with great people. And also too, part of my, part of my healing, I'm very careful of who's surrounding me because it's really important that each day I get up, that I'm, I'm um, fueling my body, infusing my body, infusing my cells with positivity. So that's one of the great things to do um, as a woman, as you're becoming aware, is become aware of the fact that you're not giving yourself enough time. Okay, we, have, we, give, we give so much of ourselves to others, but not to us. So the, the minute you take the time to sit down and face that mirror, which is you, you face you, you face that, whether it's that little, that child, that was issues from childhood that was never dealt with. Okay, you sit down and you face those issues. Um, therapy, um, self-care, um, traveling, doing different little things. I encourage women to do the things that you've always wanted to do as a child. Um, recently, I remember I used to love to travel. I'd, st I'd never traveled, but I used to love it. You know, I was looking at a picture of me when I was 18. Oh, again, this is important why it's great to have good friends around. A friend of mine was like, she, he asked me, what would you tell that 18 year old self of yours and what did she want what did that 18 year old self want that she didn't get which got her sick now right because there are things we wanted to do as at the age of 16 18 21 we have goals and when we don't uphold to those goals then we become upset depressed and all these emotions invite disease well the youth that I mentor this is what I tell them Know what you want in life, right? You have your goals, but you have to make sure every choice that you make, that you take, aligns with those goals. What happens is when we become adults, right? We, didn't, we don't hold to our choices. We don't, we don't hold ourselves accountable to the goals that we made for ourselves. We become bitter, angry, resentful. Then we invite disease. At the end, it's choices, right? At the end, you can either invite disease through poor choices, or you deflect it, or you stay away from disease by making great choices, whether choices in nutrition, nutrition with friends, nutrition in partners, um, choices in, in your purpose. Okay, when we're not living up to our purpose, okay, we are doing our, our soul injustice. Um, anytime that we're not living to our best self, Okay, and we are inviting disease. That was an amazing interview from Fabiola. May she rest in peace. And Clearly, to be a great leader, it requires self-awareness. Self-awareness is having a clear perception of your personality, whether it's your strengths, your weaknesses, your thoughts, beliefs, motivations, or even emotions. Self-awareness allows you to understand other people and how they perceive you and your attitude and your response to them in the moment. As you develop your self-awareness, you are able to make changes in your thoughts and your actions and make better decisions. And with self-awareness, your self-awareness will allow you to develop and practice more attention on challenges and your strengths. It's really about creating an opportunity for community to come together, for people of all ages to come and take advantage of the free workshops, get to know the leaders within their community, learn some skills, and have an opportunity for safe family fun. Yeah.